Hey guys, it's Craig Kuzma here, back with another video, and this video today is going to be my new review on the iPad Pro after having it for over three months and how I feel about it now. Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so um, I've had this uh, iPad for about a little over three months now. Actually, I, I'm not sure, it may even be four months, I don't know. It's over three months, I know that. And um, this is going to be an artist review. I pretty much only use my iPad for art. I use it for some videos and stuff, and uh, you know, Netflix, Hulu, that stuff. But I use this on a daily basis extremely heavily. Um, doing my artwork and uh, doing work for projects and companies and commissions, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, so this is the 12.9 inch, um, 128 gig. And so let's get in here. Um, I wanna start off with performance. So the performance is great. Um, it's still very snappy. I haven't had any issues with any um, any crashes. I think I may have had one crash, and that's because uh, I I'm not sure what, what 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 was up with that. I think it was mostly the app, and all the apps have stepped up the game. But I'm going to talk about that later on. Um, <clears throat> so, um, the yeah, the performance is great. Like I said, very snappy. Everything's going well. Um, I have now used up, let me show you the storage, I have now used up 28 gigs and that's mostly because of Procreate, that's, um, I have, I use Procreate as my main art tool on here and um, I have my 4K recording feature on and I have quite a few pages of a project, specific project, and it has 4K recording for all of those and it has many hours on each page. So. Yeah, that, that takes up a lot of space, but I'm going to be going through and deleting some of those and it's going to take away, uh, or I'm going to be transferring them and choosing which vis videos to keep and it'll take away a lot of that storage. So I would have to say, if you wanted to get an iPad Pro, <clears throat> I would definitely not go for the 64 gig, um, 28 gig or higher. Uh, 28 gig is a very nice um, amount. It's uh, re really good uh, if you have money for the 200, ah, it's 200 something variant. Um, if you have money for that, I would say go for it. More storage is better. 60, uh, 64, 62 gig, uh, something like that. Um, 62 gig. That that's that's not very good. That's not going to get you very far. Um, I would say just save up the little bit more and get the 128 gig. It's totally worth it. So that's what I have to say about that. Um. Now, let's get into the Apple Pencil and its performance on here after long-term and heavy use. So, the Apple Pencil, um, it still works just as good as it does when I got it. I have not changed the nib, and the battery life is just as good. Um, the pressure sensitivity has not... Oop, that's actually <laughs> for one of my videos I'm doing. Oh. <laughs> That should be posted in the same day as this one, but um, so this uh, it hasn't lost any pr any pressure sensitivity. I think I'm on airbrush here. Yeah. Haven't lost any pressure sensitivity on this, and the tip, yes, it has worn down a bit. Um, let me see if I can get this for you. If you can kind of see, it's a little. Let me see if I can zoom up on it for you for you. It's you can kind of see there's a little bit of uh, of like a little I don't know what to call it. It's gotten sharp sharper at the tip because of it wearing down. But good thing is it hasn't affected the pressure sensitivity at all, and yeah, it's really great. So um, the uh, I still have the replacement nib. Um, I would say this nib will probably last me another, I don't know, I have to say maybe three months. And even if it doesn't last me another three months, like if it lasts me longer than that, I'm just going to change it out anyways and just have this as a backup. So, um, and uh, 
I think the wear down is mostly being because I have the I have a anti glare screen protector, so it has a little bit more tooth. Um, that tooth has gone away and it's turned into more of a smooth surface, and uh, but it still has some grab compared to some of the glossier screen protectors. Um, so I don't think I, I'm probably not even going to be changing it for a while either because I actually like this feel and the scratches don't actually get in the way of the the quality of the screen it's really I think I can actually pause it you can see it there it looks bad but when the screens on I don't even notice them I mean yeah when there's sunlight it kind of kind of doles out the quality of the screen but normally I'm working with this in inside somewhere so or somewhere where there's enough light but even if even if um you did have some glare you could turn it up a lot more and it gets or some uh it the the glare like the scratches actually affect the screen you could just turn it up and it normally normally helps it but it's never been a problem for me um other thing i want to get into is battery life um the battery life has not changed at all um there's always been a problem with how long this thing takes to charge i know there's a charger option that is like it, it, you buy a lightning cable and then an adapter separately and it charges it in I think half the time or even I think maybe in a quarter of the time I, I don't know but it charges it way faster I haven't gotten that because it's like $75 altogether and I'm like okay why did you do this um but it's fine I I I was having a hard time where I would have to plug it in when I was working. The It would get warm, but it didn't really matter to me. But it was just annoying to have to unplug it, plug it in, unplug it, plug it in when I was moving around or something. Um, so I just started charging it overnight. And it it's totally fine to do that. Because devices nowadays actually have the operating system knows when it's fully charged. And once it gets to 100, it stops charging. What happens is... Once it stops charging, it pretends like it's not even not even there, and um, then if your device goes down one or two percent, it will charge it back up and then stop charging again. So if you've ever had it where you charge something overnight, like a phone or another tablet, and you unplug it and it went down to ninety nine percent, that's probably why. <laughs> so yeah, so there's no problem in charging this thing overnight. Um, yeah, so that that kind of gets rid of the battery life issue for me. It lasts about six hours since I use this heavily with art programs all the time. I'm always drawing on it, and it lasts me about six hours. Um, uh, maybe maybe more than that sometimes. It just really depends on how heavily I'm using it. Um, if I'm using a lot of like selection tools and then drawing with a selection tool that makes the app work over time plus it's using the apple pencil and if maybe i'm using spotify at the same time on it that that takes down the battery much faster but um i've been getting longer battery life when i've been using spotify on my phone instead of on here so um and then the battery life for the apple pencil has not changed at all in fact, it normally lasts about a cycle of this and about uh, three-fourths of a cycle. So one and three-fourths of a cycle of the iPad. So the battery life in, on this is really good. And it takes only maybe like, I have to say, 20 to 30 minutes to charge all the way up to 100%. So I mean, just like pop it in when you're going and eating or something or if if you're going to take a shower and... You know, I, I'm not saying I'd take like 20, 30 minute showers, but I mean, it <laughs> charges it up enough for you to use it for another, you know, almost whole other cycle for not for the iPad. So, um, battery life, great. Everything good there. So, um, I want to get into the apps, the app section. So, um, the apps are getting better and better. I think one of the big issues when the iPad Pro first debuted was the application companies that were, you know, creating uh, art apps or had pre-existing art apps weren't ready for the level 
that they needed to bring. And people were very critical of that. And Procreate was the best painting system or just art system in general on there. It doesn't have all the uh, like really crazy tricks and gimmicks, but it is the most fluent while drawing. And this used to be a problem without the tricks and gimmicks before when it was like, oh, I need this, I need that. You kind of get used to it and just go back to your old traditional ways. But um, this is another thing that they've improved on a lot. So they've started creating somewhat of an ecosystem, I would have to say. Uh, you, you can now, I, I, you probably could do this before. I'm not sure, but I don't know. A lot more apps are starting to support this. And, um, where you can see now Procreate can export in Photoshop document. They can import Photoshop document. It can do all that stuff. So now I can go to share. I can go to share artwork and then I can go to Photoshop document. Now this is when it gets really cool because you're like, you, what's going on here? bad this is bad for you procreate what's going on all right i'm gonna come out this hasn't happened to me before so uh so photoshop document okay there we go and then if i'm exporting it i could export it as an actual photoshop document or i could just import it into another application like medibang this is what i do for, with my comic pages and or my manga pages whatever you want to call it um and i import it in here as a Photoshop document, keeps all the layers, resolution, everything, and then I screen tone it. So that is really cool. And so if I wanted to bring it back to Procreate, I can go to save, I can go to new save, I can go to return to gallery, and then I go to this, and I go to um, Photoshop document and it gives me option to share I scroll over find procreate and then it sends to procreate each one has its own system for this so now I can go to procreate and it will automatically open it in procreate as a Photoshop document so this is what I mean by ecosystem I find it really really cool that that happens so this is this is the new one that's the oh wait no, that's the that's the new one. And so everything that I did, it just stays the same. So people will be like, well, you don't have one application that can do everything, so you have to switch between apps. This makes it so much easier to do that. And so it's starting to build a little ecosystem there. Other new applications that are coming in, coming in and they don't offer this feature, exporting, importing, Photoshop document, they're going to kind of screw that up a little bit. But... That's how I feel about the apps. It's getting better. Um, I feel like in 2017, all the applications have started stepping up their game much more. Um, Procreate had a lot of rough spots. They had an update that was really exciting, but had a lot of problems for um, some users. But now in 2017, they fixed almost all of those. Everything that it does, it does great. And I have to say, you could create full professional works in here and that that's what I feel and if you uh, are wondering some people say well it's not as good for painting it's not good for fine lines I don't really agree with that um, I think you can do anything you want on here if you set your mind to it now nah. <laughs> and this isn't like super fine line work but these are some fine lines I just zoom up. I mean, why, why else would they have a zoom option? So you can zoom up in ink. So you can do fine lines. And I'm going to do works with even finer lines than this soon. So you can see that. And you've seen some people, if you're looking up iPad Pro videos, where they paint some crazy stuff on here. So super realistic. So it does, it does really great. Um, I'll show you just as an example. One of my commission pages that I've done um, is one of the heavier pages I've worked on on here, and this is when there, all the all the bad um, updates came in, and it was kind of rough, and I had a hard time. Uh, but this is one of the pages I did on here, and it did 
Procreate handle handle it really well. Um. All right. So, I feel like the only issue uh, I mentioned this in my first review. So there was an issue where if you exported your uh, document in a PNG or JPEG, it would mess with the DPI. It would bring the DPI down. I blame this on Apple. Sorry, Apple. Maybe it, it still might be Apple. I'm not sure exactly, but it still does it. And I noticed that Procreate does it differently than Medibank. So it might be a restriction by Apple saying they have to do this to make it go faster, or it might just be a restriction that the apps are putting on it. So it could be either one's fault. I'm not sure completely. I think it's the applications themselves. Because Procreate, I'll export something that's 350 DPI and it'll bring it down to um, 172 or 32 or something DPI. And I don't like that. I want my full resolution that I did it in. I did it that way because I needed it that way. Um, Medibang, as long as anything above 350 DPI, it will uh, bring it down. It will not change your dimensions of your canvas, only the DPI. And DPI is only important for printing. So if you're doing only digital, like, if you're only doing it for uh, digital comics or or just digital posting, then you're all good. Like, 72 DPI is good for that. But when you're going uh, planning for print in the future, you're going to want something 350 DPI or higher. But the way to get around that is um, just like I uh, took this and I shared it to... Um, uh, well, they got an issue here. I don't know what's going on with that, but um, there you go. Uh, I I would if I wanted it to be 350 DPI and I needed to export it from my iPad and I wasn't able to get to my computer or something, um, I would just bring it into Medibang and then export it as a um, right here. I would just do JPEG PNG or transparent PNG. So that's one way to do it, so you get at least 350 DPI on that, so that's cool. Um, so I, that's how I do that. Um, if you want your full 600 resolution, if you're doing it in that, um, or DPI, you're going to have to export it in Photoshop document and get it to your computer somehow to export it like that. So it's really not that big of a deal. I've, I've got my workarounds, and it works great. Um, so I... Uh, the the last part to this is should you get the iPad Pro um I would have to say yes if you're looking at the iPad Pro you're looking at it most likely to as an alternative for possibly uh, Cintiq or something like that if it depends on your workload and what you're doing on it but I believe if you're doing this um even as starting into a profession, um, this will get you very far. If you're not doing fully professional work, this is perfect for you. Um, not saying I'm fully professional. That's, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying that this would work for a professional artist that doesn't have really high demands for specific uh, projects or huge files. Um, I'm a I'm a comic artist, so my pages can be 350 DPI to 600 DPI with um, a standard uh, comic size uh, dimension, and Procreate handles that great. Um, and I I draw on this all the time; has hardly any lag. I would say go for it. I mean, you're gonna have it for a while, and. It's, it's really portable. If you don't like this size, get the smaller one. But I really like this size. Um, some people find it a little bit intrusive when you're out in public. Um, but I would say just turn down your uh, screen brightness and it'll help with that a little bit. It won't be as in someone else's face with the screen being so bright. It's no different than having kind of like a bigger book that you're looking at. So it's, it's, it's really nice. So um, I'm saying so a lot. So, 
I would say get it. Um, but the other question is, <laughs> the new generation's about to come out. So do you want to wait or not? I don't know. I can't tell you that right yet, uh, right now, because I don't know the specs of the new ones, the new stuff that might be coming with it, possibly the new Apple Pencil. Um, um, I'm hoping they have a new Apple Pencil, but uh, this one, if you're still, if you're thinking about getting this one, I would say it's a great choose. It's it's a great buy. Um, the applications are stepping up their game every year. And uh, Procreate, in their newest update, promised they would change our lives in 2017. So I'm holding them on that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I would say get it for the millionth time. I really like this device. Um, I haven't thought twice about, I used to always talk about, I want to draw on tablet, I want to draw on tablet. I would always say this, and I would always dream about it. And ever since I got this, I haven't complained about not having one once. And this has actually helped me um, improve my traditional works. So I would have to say, it's uh, if you're a traditional artist looking to kind of move into a digital realm, this is also, uh, also, also a really good alternative for you. Um, it's not as expensive as the other ones. So. Alrighty, well, I hope you guys liked this review. Um, hope you guys... Uh, got something out of it you needed you know you clicked on this video for a reason and i hope i answered any questions you had and uh i'll be actually making some other um videos about uh the new generation ipad and stuff coming up once i get information on it and some of my theories and things i hope and things that i'm disappointed on if it doesn't if they if they're not bringing their a game um but yeah well you guys can uh Find me on my Facebook page if you want to see more of my art. Uh, please subscribe if you want to see more from me. And uh, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. And like always, guys, I'll see you next time.